Welcome, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Or as I would normally say, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. But since we're all from or in one time zone, I can just go with good afternoon. My name is Mate, and I'll be talking to you about kubectl and OC, specifically about six CLI and well, my team a little bit, because my team owns OC. Uh, but before I do, let me show of hands, how many of you have ever heard about kubectl? Oh, cool. How many of you have heard about OC? Uh, and the same about usage, kubectl? And OC? Great. OK, how many of you? Have different uh, have problems with pronunciation of kubectl. There are <laughs> three or four, and possibilities are kubectl, cube control, kubectl, and I'm pretty sure there are a couple more. Uh, so, even though we probably don't have a official way of saying kubectl, the um, the logo that we have is suggesting it should be kubectl. Why? Because our logo is a cuttlefish. Uh, but we'll get to that one in a bit. So why am I speaking to you about this in the first place? So I'm 50% of tech lead and 50% of a chair lead for 6 CLI, which is taking after uh, kubectl. And I'm 100% the leader for the uh, uh, for the workloads team that is responsible for OC. So I think I have a quorum to say the uh, majority of those things. So I've mentioned that um, the, the greeting that I uh, mentioned before uh, is the one that I'm always using during our, our biweekly meetings for 6 CLI. Uh, those are happening every other Wednesday, and the every other Wednesday will be the next Wednesday, and then Every other, two, every other two weeks. Uh, you can find us, and there's a time, uh, you can find us on 6CLI Kubernetes uh, Slack, and we also have a very low profile uh, mailing list, so if you're interested. I've mentioned you the logo, so if you haven't seen the logo, and I would like to see a show of hand, who has not seen the bottom logo? That's bad. That means you're not following me on Twitter, because literally, I would even say over almost a year ago, I was tweeting that we got a logo. But that also means you are not showing up for six CLIs, which are cool, we are very friendly, and we do really cool stuff. Um, but honestly, yeah, that's, that's basically how our logo looks like. And all of the credit goes to Ashley McNamara. Um, we asked her over a year ago to create a logo for us. We only had a rough idea that we want to have cube logo and a cuttlefish next to it. Um, and she returned to us uh, with such an amazing graphic. So thank you very much, Ashley, uh, if you get a chance to, uh, to look at it. At it. This is a replay, kind of, of the talk that myself, Phil, who's uh, the second uh, tech lead for 6CLI, and Sean, who's the second uh, chair for 6CLI that we did in San Diego in November uh, for KubeCon. Back then, we were given 90 minutes. Currently, I only have 21 left, which is not enough. Uh, back then, we decided that we want to have a conversation with the audience. And we literally asked ask people to ask us about anything. It can be as simple as, well, I have a bug open, or I have a PR. Can you help me review that one? All the way up to what is the future of 6CLI, where you are planning to be in a couple of months, a couple of years. So before I go to the rest of the presentation, my question is, does anyone have any questions? OK, 
can be a PR that, I, that you want to have reviewed, uh, but we will review it afterwards, but I'll note it down. Um, or anything related to either kubectl or OC. If you don't have questions, and trust me, I would say there's five times more of you than there were people back then in San Diego. So I'm pretty sure that if they were able to come up with questions for 90 minutes, you can come up with some questions for me right now. If not, I can go through the, through the slides that I have presented. I'll talk a little bit about where we are, what we've done in the past, uh, what we are planning in the future, uh, how you can contribute to, um, to Cubicado or OC. Are there any questions as of now? Or should I proceed with the presentation? Okay, great. That's, that's a valid option as well. So uh, the first question that came back uh, to ask back then in, in, in San Diego, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of people will find it confusing still today, is Kubernetes repo and Kubicatl repo. Um, we're in the ongoing process of splitting Kubicatl out of the main repository. So in all honesty, if you have a PR fix or anything regarding uh, kube control, you are still submitting that against the main Kubernetes repo. Uh, the kubectl repo is for issues, and it's a mirror that you can consume if you're planning to build something on top of uh, kube control, like what we are doing in OpenShift with OC. We are building additional stuff, OpenShift specific elements on OC. So actually, that's the correct directory. Uh, the crucial name that appears there is the staging. Staging is a directory, and if you look, uh, if you've ever got a chance to look through Kubernetes repository, staging is a directory, it's a temporary directory uh, that is meant to separate the internals of Kubernetes and the repositories that are planned to be extracted from the main repo. This ensures that we have clean dependencies and there are no internal dependencies that will all break uh, if we want to uh, get this thing out. Unfortunately, due to the fact that Kube, uh, Kube Control was initially wrote in Kubernetes, there's still a few uh, dependencies. Unfortunately, those few require a significant amount of time to get them out of the main repo. So I'm planning that approximately next six months, we will be fully, fully out of, of the main repo. Uh, for OC, stuff is much easier. OC itself got out of the main repo. It used to live in OpenShift origin, but it's not anymore. Uh, we put a lot of effort in the spring last year, and before summer, we were in actually in a separate repository. Uh, unfortunately, due to the fact that uh, OC consumes kubectl and kubectl still has hard dependencies on Kubernetes, we vendor all of that. Uh, that's why it's also important for us to clean the dependencies inside of kubectl and, uh, and cut the, uh, that dependency significantly. Uh, I mentioned that also before that OC is actually a consumer of kubectl, which basically means everything that is working in kube control, any command uh, available in kube control is also available in OC. The other way around is not true because we have OpenShift specific items such as working with builds, deployment configs, routes, image streams, and several other resources that are very OpenShift specific. Uh, of course, with the overall goal of moving towards plugins, making everything accessible through CRDs, uh, the differences becoming less and less visible, and that is also a goal for my team to, to entirely scratch those uh, changes. That is an important topic. I've heard lots of people asking questions. What are the compatibility guarantees? 
we have lots of issues where people are using newer uh, kubectl 117 with very old clusters because that's the policy that they have in their company and they're complaining that something is not working. Uh, with the amount of changes that happened in the past year, slightly over a year, um, especially with regards to working with the extension points such as CRDs namely. Uh, and I'll be talking about a little bit about server-side printing. Um, the guarantees that we have, the strong guarantees that we have are about plus, one, plus minus one currently. It will change uh, because the majority of the code is slowly getting stabilized. Uh, the version changes should not be affecting. There's also one additional goal. Uh, as one of the reasons for, for us to split uh, Kubicuttle to a separate repo is to be able to iterate faster. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you are aware, but Kubernetes is being released once a quarter. And we still think that's too slow because we would like to deliver features to our users much faster. It's not about, it's not about uh, I mean, fixing bugs is one thing, but it's not about breaking compatibility, but it's about providing additional capabilities to users. But if we wanna release faster, we need to ensure that the backwards compatibility, at least the plus one minus, plus minus one that Kubernetes currently is doing, will increase significantly if we will be releasing, let's say, once a month. That basically means we will have to have backwards compatibility of about plus, minus four, five, six. Uh, but with the current knowledge, it should not be any, a big problem. Plugins. I've mentioned, I've mentioned that several times extensibility is a big topic for two years or so. Uh, we have the ability to split the container runtimes in Kubernetes. You can use Docker, you can use Cryo. Uh, there are options for different storage backends. You can use AWS, GCP, uh, whatever. There's so many of them that I, I have not, no idea about them. I know whom to, to ask about those, thankfully. Um, same applies for API. For API, it's the CRDs, which is custom resource definitions, which allow you, you as users or your cluster providers to extend the capabilities, extend the, mod, the resource model that the Kubernetes has with your own resources, especially when you're working with operators, that's a crucial element. The problem with that is CRDs are not necessarily supported through kubectl, because kubectl currently, as it is, has a lot of knowledge about the types that it is working with in the code at a compile time, and we needed to fix that. And the simplest thing that was possible was to have an extension point inside of kubectl OC to, for people to write their own mechanism, write their own functionality, and extend the capabilities, the built-in capabilities of kubectl. Uh, this is where we introduced CLI runtime. CLI runtime is, is actually a building block that kubectl is the first consumer of. It's a set of functions, helpers for working with printing so that you can have the same identical printing mechanism as uh, kubectl uh, has. That basically means if you pass dash O, you can uh, pick between JSON YUM, white, and JSON template, whatever, whatever. There's several of them. Uh, that you can, well, you can write those on your own, but it will take some time, which is, well, obviously time consuming. Uh, Ideally, you can just consume whatever uh, kubectl does and reuse that functionality. And that increases uh, your user base because some users that are accustomed already to using kubectl will have the same uh, experience using your plugin. Uh, like I said, plugin, uh, pr printing, the uh, configs, uh, there is a common uh, interface for consuming resources and working with resources, the resource builder. But I don't want to go too much into details because that might be a little bit boring, although for me it's a little bit, it's quite fascinating, but I, wanna, I don't want to bore you too much. Um, 
for starters, uh, we figured out that it would be nice to write a sample plugin, and that's the second link. It's literally the simplest possible plugin that you can think of. If I remember correctly, it is the plugin itself. This is how simple the plugin is. The majority of the code is ready, and we are reusing generic CLI options from CLI runtime. And the comment itself, uh, it is modifying the, the config so that you can set a, uh, a namespace inside of the config so that you don't have to every single time do uh, kubectl n uh, Users of open OC uh, might be familiar with OC project for switching the, uh, the, the project you're working on. Uh, to permanently work with within a particular uh, within a particular project, uh, kubectl does not have that notion. Uh, this we wrote a simple plugin. It's super super simple. Finally, when it comes to managing plugins, the problem is how do you well how do you manage plugins? Uh, given that you have a a set of users. And currently, we have quite a few plugins, honestly. I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head, and I haven't written it down. Uh, but uh, the number is growing significantly. Uh, so Ahmed figured out that it would be nice to write a um, plugin manager. Uh, that was an inter project in Google. And some time ago, we adopted it. And it's currently one of the six CLI official sub-projects, which basically means we take care of the project and we maintain it. So Crew is, in itself, a plugin to kubectl, which allows managing other plugins. It takes care of the problem of installing, building plugins, and um, managing. Sorry. Features. I mentioned before the server-side print. What it is server-side print? Uh, the extensibility topics, again, uh, when we create, when you invoke kubectl get on a, on a pod, uh, kubectl knew beforehand how the pod is structured, what kind of fields it has, how to print it. Like literally it was hard coded in the get command, how to print a particular resource. The problem with that approach is kubectl does not know every single resource or how to print it, especially those that are uh, created either as an additional API servers or as CRDs. So we figure out that it would be nice for the server to tell us how to print a particular resource. Uh, so currently, it's the server role or the CRD author to tell the server how to print a particular resource. kubectl will get that information will read that information and will print it accordingly. So the entire knowledge moved from the client onto the server. The additional benefit is every single consumer, whether that be kubectl or someone decides to write their own plug, uh, their own uh, client in a different programming language or web console or something like that, can reuse the same uh, primitives for printing resources and have a consistent output. Uh, the other two interesting features that we are currently working on, the server-side print is an ongoing because there is a, uh, the describe functionality is still baked into kubectl. And we need to figure out, because the same applies, we don't know how to describe a CRD. So if you try to describe a CRD at this point in time, uh, the information won't be too much of use. Uh, so we need to move the same functionality again to the server. Uh, the debug and events commands, which will be new commands, for the OC users, the debug is pretty much familiar. You, you should be pretty much familiar if you've ever used OC. OC debug is there since, I don't know, almost beginning. It allows to in, uh, create an additional pod uh, for debugging purposes. You can specify what kind of image or whether you're going to just uh, uh, debug a node. Especially, that's especially useful if you're working with OpenShift, uh, OpenShift 4, uh, by default, we cut off the SSH into the nodes. The OC debug node actually creates a 
privileged container that, have, that has full access to a particular node. Uh, with the development of ephemeral containers, and if you have questions about ephemeral containers, find me later. But in short, they will, uh, they will allow injecting a container that will be sharing namespace, uh, uh, process namespace, and you will uh, have the ability to directly get into the processes of the already running pod. Um, so that's happening currently in upstream. Uh, the ephemeral containers, ephemeral, there are beta or something along those lines. Um, and the person that is working on, uh, on the ephemeral containers figure out that it would be nice to have something like kubectl debug. Um, I contacted him that it would be nice if if it covers many more use cases, such as the OC debug node, functionality, and many, many more. And we put together a, a proposal. And uh, the proposal was merged last week, if I remember correctly, I tagged it. And it should be, uh, should start, we should start the implementation. The events, the events is a, uh, it's a, how we gather the experience over the past couple of years. Uh, Currently, the only way you can interact with the events, aside from the web con open to web console, which is, has pretty nice interface for events, uh, you have only kubectl get events, and that will give you all of the events, or all of the events or the, for a particular namespace. That's a problem, uh, because there's no good way for filtering and whatnot. And there's lots of, uh, lots of requests for people who want to filter those, people want to sort differently those, et cetera, et cetera. The problem with this, is those functionalities are only for events, and kubectl get is not only for events. So we have a conflict of interest. That's why we figure out, let's create a new command. A new command that will give us much more control over the events, especially that uh, there's a lot of work going on around standardizing events. Um, so we wanna have more control over what we can get out of those events. Okay, so aside from the crew that I mentioned before, uh, the sub-projects that the 6CLI owns, there are two others that I only shortly mentioned. Uh, the QI is very interesting, and it's currently in the phase of moving off of IBM over to, uh, to Kubernetes 6. It's actually a graphical user interface for kubectl. It's pretty cool. Uh, it can have a lot more functionality. Uh, it's built on, uh, on the Electron. Customized, on the other hand, which is another uh, sub-project of ours, is very helpful when you want to work with configuration management. It's kind of like templating engine, but not quite. Uh, if you haven't got a chance, go check it out. Uh, by default, it is part of every kubectl command. There is a dash k flag hidden under uh, kubectl commands, especially under apply, and it can read customized files. Uh, the future, the separate repo. That's probably the biggest issue that we're currently working on. Uh, I mentioned that we started this over two years ago. It's an ongoing work. We're almost there. The problem is the big things that just got left and we're, this is where we are. The dynamic commands, it's an important, uh, it's an interesting topic again. Uh, it again follows the path of extensibility, plugins, etc. It's basically moving the knowledge how to run specific things over to the server. This is especially important for us for the create commands. Uh, currently create commands literally embed the Go types for particular resources. So creates are only viable to work with um, the built-in resources. And I'm not talking about create-f and you pass a file to create the thing. But rather about create deployment, create whatever. Same applies for set, set image, set uh, uh, probes, and stuff like that. We wanna move as much as possible part of the, those functionalities over to the server. Commands and headers is a way for, uh, it's a way for us to gather some kind of metrics about uh, what people are using. And a plugin like dev model, come find me. Okay, uh, reminder where the meetings are. If you have any questions, I'll be here for a little bit. Uh, come find me. Thank you.